Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie. Today we're going to take you on a tour of my WaterWise garden. It's 2023 and it's March. And in this tour, I'm going to be interested to look and see how many plants have made it through the winter. Now this has been an exceptionally cold and wet winter. It's still been snowing. It's still below freezing and it's the end of March. I am really, really, really ready to start planting. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you what I did today that probably wasn't the most well-advised thing to do, but I did it anyway. So let's go around and see what's growing and what's blooming in a very cold beginning of 2023. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you what I purchased. Now they're in the shadows, so we're gonna get a little bit closer, but I did wanna show you, despite all the deer digging, we are going to have some flowers come up in my front flower bed. Now this is evidence of deer digging up my pansies but we've got flower beds starting. Several of them are, have been dug up and they're gone, but we're gonna have a few pansies. But let's come back over here and look what I got. Let me show you this. Look at the color of that flower. I'll show you this other one. Now these are called hellebore or Lenten rose. Supposedly they're hardy in our area. They take a little bit of shade and so now the ground is frozen still in the area that I want to plant them. But I am really, really excited to plant these and see how well they do. Now hellebores will take a little bit more water than some of the plants that I have around here. I'm going to be sticking them in my front yard in a shady location. We'll see how well they do with my water wise plants. If they don't do very well, then I may move them to the back where I won't be able to see them as often, but they'll get a little bit more water. But I think these are absolutely gorgeous. These are my purchases today. And as I said, the ground is frozen. I'm not going to be able to plant them for a while. So we're looking forward to the moment that I can plant those. Now this is my side yard. And we've got some daffodils finally, finally coming up. We're a little bit late. We pruned my Vitex Agnes Castus or Chase tree. I really like how it turned out. I like to sculpturally prune these so you get really pretty winter interest as well as controlling the height. And this will grow back up to about 10 feet tall by summertime. Now here's what's blooming in my yard. These are some of my favorite little flowers. This is Iris reticulata, the very, very first iris, a rock iris. They've got so many different colors. Let me show you some more patches. I've got some hardy tulips. We'll see if the deer leave these alone. Here's some more of the rock iris. Sedum is coming out of dormancy. And here's another fun patch. Look at the colors on those. This one right here is a little bit different than everybody else. And we've got a crocus poking its head up. I'm really excited to see the crocus coming up. So let me give you an overview of my front yard. We're just in regular suburbia. And we've had a problem with the deer eating the base of my spruce this year. But the other thing that I was worried about was my succulents. The deer have eaten just about every single little succulent that I have. But some of my hens and chicks have survived. They absolutely love eating my grape hyacinths, but those will survive. They'll come right back. They do that every year. Here's another little succulent that survived and a couple of more. And these are making a comeback after being eaten to the ground can see where they ate the tops off of that one. Now so far the trees are not looking like they're going to come out of dormancy yet. So we'll have to wait and see. Now I'm hoping the rain and the deer have not completely destroyed these, but I was not sure if these would survive. These are my partridge feather. I'll show you a picture of what they look like in full bloom. But they're not completely dead. I thought they would end up rotting with all the moisture that we got. Here's another one that the deer dug up, but I replanted it. It's still going. 
Here's some more rock iris coming up. Here's another little rock iris. Now I did finish my spring cleanup. The only thing I need to prune back is this poor baby. This is my weeping cherry. And for the past several years, I have not gone in and thinned it out very much. So this is next on my list of things to do. I need to go in there and take out some of that tangle of branches and maybe I will film that. There's some dead, a lot of crowding, and I don't want to lose this. This has been a great focal point in my front yard. So this is just an overview of the corner of where I am. And so far the cages on the plants that the deer have been eating, because they've only picked a few plants to eat, thank heavens, but so far the cages have done really well. One of the plants that I'm waiting for has a broken branch here. This is a bush cherry, and this should be one of the first things to bloom. We've got some buds on it. So as I said, it's still freezing, and even below freezing. The nights have still been in the 20s. So all of my figs are still wrapped. We'll unwrap those as soon as we start warming up a little bit above freezing in the evenings. And we're only going to unwrap them part way so that we can cover them back up just in case we get the rare spring freezes that come back. We've got buds forming on my lilac. I cannot wait to see this back in bloom. So this shrub is going to be the earliest one to bloom. We had some buds forming. Let me see here if I can find any of the buds. I may have pruned them all off. This is my golden currant. I did go through and prune it. It was a mess before, a lot of curling branches. This is one that I missed. I think the aphids caused the curling like this. You see what that looks like? I had, most of the branches were curling like that one. So I had to prune a lot of it off. I need, may need to come back in and take that one off. The fruit trees in our food forest are pruned. I'm still working on my apple tree pruning video. We had Dan Owen, an arborist, come and prune the apple trees, but I did not do a good job filming it. So what I need to do is go through and, and edit that one more heavily than I've edited it. I may need to add some more of my stuff in it too. So we're working on that video. Still have not pruned the jujube. That needs to be pruned. Dan's gonna come back and prune the jujube. Sorry about the dog in the background. We're waiting for the weather to clear up so that I can clean up all of the passion fruit mess. I may need to figure out how to redo this. This is planted in a really narrow area and it's last year it grew really big and beautiful, but it was too crowded and it didn't produce any fruit. So I may need to either find a place to move it or I may need to thin it out as it comes up. So I'm in Utah zone six slash seven and this is the, this is Passiflora incarnata, which is a hardy passion fruit. This is one of my little small hoop houses. We had some cabbage and kohlrabi that I harvested, some chiji misai. But I think it's time to remove everything out of here. I think the cabbage actually rotted. This was covered with a single layer of plastic and the frost cloth here. And that was enough to be able to protect everything. But as I said, this was the only one that had rot issues with it. So we may need to rethink this. This is my Nikita's Gift Persimmon. It's a cross between Asian American persimmons, and we're starting to get buds on it. The buds are swelling, survived the winter without protection. It's looking great. This is a Kazaki pomegranate, and I'm thinking that I may need to remove the covering off of these sooner than the figs. They're a little hardier than the figs. Matter of fact, one of the tops blew off of them. Let's go look at that one and see what it looks like inside. Or actually, maybe we should look at this one. feels like it all survived. Kind of see what it looks like. I think we're going to leave the top off of these and see what it and see what happens. This is a little Parfianca pomegranate. I'm thinking this one survived too. Well, I don't know. Let's see. I'm hoping that it survived. The top blew off of it in one of the coldest nights and I haven't replaced it. 
but it is really warm inside, so we'll see how well it does. This is a new one. This is my gomi berry. I just planted it about three weeks ago. It's gone through some pretty heavy frosts and freezes. And it looks like it's going to be one of the early ones to come out of dormancy. So we hope that survive, survives. This is the sweet scarlet gomi berry. Then I have a smaller pollinator right here. This is the red gem. It's a red gem gomi berry. So I'm going to be very interested to see how these do. This one's definitely suffered some tip burn on the new growth. So I'm hoping that it's been surviving our cold spring. Still need to prune the grapevines. I usually prune these the first week in April. So it's about time to prune these. Got my hardy perennial onions coming up. These are green onions that are perennial and they just come back year after year. These aren't chives, they look like chives. They are actually green onions. I got these from my ex-mother-in-law and I don't know where she got them, but they've been wonderful. Now this bed is my garlic. I've got about 120 heads of garlic in here and nothing has, well, I, they just barely started to come up. They're still really, really tiny and not all of them have come up. There's one there. There's a little one down in there. So this is the latest they've ever, ever taken to sprout. But they're coming up, so I'm not worried about them. I've been leaving my hoop houses open, despite the cold weather. We're starting to see some cold damage, but these cabbages did not rot, and they're just about ready to harvest. But the kale did receive some cold damage to them, and they're going to actually be bolting pretty soon, so I'm going to be taking all of this out. I'll harvest the cabbage and compost the kale. Here's my other little hoop house. The chijimisai is already bolting. The green onions made it through the winter, but they're not really edible anymore, so we're going to have to take those out, and then the cabbage is ready to be harvested. And the carrots made it through too, and they're looking pretty good, but they're not big. Let me see if I can find one and see how big it is. See, they're just tiny. A lot of roots, but they're just tiny. These were planted last August, and I would love any hints. I don't know why they don't grow. Everybody else that I see that overwinters carrots has big, beautiful carrots to harvest. I have yet to harvest big carrots. Yeah, I would love to know what I'm doing wrong. We had a fruit tree pruning class. Everybody came and pruned fruit trees, and this is the first day that it's actually been dry enough to come up here and clean things up, and I did not clean them up. I had too many other things to do. So we're gonna come and get rid of all of these branches. Cherry tree and the plum tree still need to be pruned. End of March, they're not even really budding out very much yet. They need to be pruned. They're going to be budding out here shortly. Just a quick look of how fast compost decomposes. This compost was up almost as tall as this fence over the winter. I've been moving everything over into this pile. So I moved everything in the center over to this pile. And now I've been moving the stuff over here into this pile. That way we can have an empty bin for all the new products coming in this year. This is an overview of my hill and my back garden. Now I planted pea starts in here a while ago and it looks like it just got too cold for them. It got down into the teens again. I was hoping that it would stay in the upper 20s, which would, they would have been fine, but it looks like maybe one of them will come back. Maybe a couple of them. I'm really, really hoping they come back. But I did put some seeds in here just in case. We're just gonna have really late peas this year. This is my rosemary. This side is looking pretty good, but this side had some pretty heavy winter damage. Now, I do get tip damage on it every year. What I do is I just prune that back and it'll grow back just fine. 
So, so far it looks like things are coming along pretty well. I'm just really excited to be able to get going with some of my projects. I've got some new garden beds that I've got to put together. I've got some garden bed irrigation to revamp. I've got some planting to do, and I'm gonna take you along for all of it. So hopefully you guys are having a little bit better spring than we are. Now I can't complain because of the moisture. We really, really need it in the West, as you know. I'm just ready for a little bit of dry weather so that we can get some things into the ground. So let me know what's going on with your weather and if you've been able to start planting already. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, share it with your friends and go have a wonderful garden adventure.